Toby Fox loves interweaving themes and gameplay. Using this concept as the basis for his 2015 smash hit of Undertale, the indie gem came out the gate touting one central idea, the ability to play through entirely without killing an enemy. And I'm sure plenty of you veteran players will know, this fundamental concept of choice pumps through as a lifeblood within the entire experience's veins, affording players a remarkable amount of distinction in their various playthroughs. So with the recent release of Deltarune, also known as Undertale 2 within certain bits of the community, it was a lock that he would incorporate so many of the same strategies within the new title. However, switching the perspective into a wholly different beast. You see, if Undertale served to give players the choice that they'd been lacking in other RPGs, then Deltarune flips the script and lets you know, through and through, that your choices mean nothing. And while this might come across as an odd notion within the game, its mechanics and elements, mirroring that of Undertale, each point towards this central theme. Chief among these is their respective boss fights, and especially the particular battles that conclude these themes. After all, no matter how cohesive an idea is, if it doesn't stick the landing, then it ends up in the dirt with the rest. So today, I want to take a look at Undertale's and Deltarune's Sands and Chaos King fights respectively, to see what makes these into such fantastic conclusions. Hey all you lightners, I'm Skip the Tutorial, and this is Boss Battle Breakdown. A deep dive into the ins and outs of boss design. And hey, if this is your first time here, then pacify that subscribe for weekly insights into your favorite boss fights. Off the bat, it is worth mentioning that in both of these games that we'll be discussing, neither fight is really the true ending. In the genocide run of Undertale, there's still plenty left after Sands. And heck, Deltarune is just one chapter right now. But I plan on showing you in this video just how the themes that are so well established prior in both of these titles are perfectly concluded in these cases of combat, even separate from what follows. Starting off, I think that both examples start to show their themes right from the very circumstances that start them up. In your duel with Sans, he explains that his role in taking you out is just out of necessity for the harsh reality your choices send him and all the other monsters into experiencing. The whole fight is predicated off of the player's two greatest choices within the game, saving and killing, with lines of dialogue that echo the helplessness of the fight. Even going so far as to tell you that your all-powerful agency with the game means he will inevitably lose. Overall, the choices that bring you to this fight, and similarly allow you to overcome it, tie every bit of the battle to your decisions. Contrast this with the journey to the Chaos King in Deltarune. In this example, the player is driven to the murderous king's castle out of prophecy instead of their own decisions. Moreover, the need to bring the other two members of your party, Susie and Rousey, restricts you to follow along a set path to achieving your goal making it feel much more like you're a pawn in a chess match. Or rather, a checker on a board in this case. And since there are no real routes to choose in this game, as there were in Undertale, your earlier choices do little to reverberate into the fight, and the event plays out the same regardless. As soon as the fights start up, the themes ramp up to 11 through their use of the combat systems. Take a look at the evasion segments in Sans' Brawl. They're these constantly shifting boxes that grant the player a myriad of different ways to narrowly escape danger. There's variable jump height to the blue soul gravity sections. And even more of these platforming bits give different routes to evade. The result of this is that, even though the attacks are hectic and tough to avoid, there's still plenty of control on the player's side to handle their situations. The Chaos King attack sequences play out in a whole different light, with the King physically hooking your range of motion and swinging it about the arena. Partner this with his red hook attack that predetermines the movement of the box, and your typical choices of action here feel confined down to pure survival tactics as you strap into the ride. This makes it clear that he's determining the pace of the battle, not you. This all plays into how Toby Fox creates a striking difference between your two different strategies in the fights, even though both fall back to inevitably letting your foe tucker out. Undertale's constant lock to fighting makes the whole thing feel fiercely offensive, even though Sans is more than a tough opponent. Whereas your focus on healing and defense in the King fight gives an undeniable sense of defensive and reactionary strategy that ultimately elicits a passive lack of decision. The greatest example of the theme cohesion within these fights shines through in the final blow delivered to both bosses. After wearing down Sans to the point where he's sweating out of his skull, in however that works out, he hits you with his famed special attack. Barely surviving through his femur fight onslaught, his strongest attack against the player is just nothing. And while it might seem ridiculous, this decision on his end stands to limit the choice the player has had in their turn and throughout the entire game simply by not letting it end. Seeming doom and gloom for your situation, you step back from your constant swiping to experience a newfound amount of patience. But as Sans rests his eye sockets after your arduous brawl, your determination powers through to physically move the soul box down for the ability to fight once more. Culminating your choice to keep fighting, your reserve continues the brawl, 
and despite missing your first attack, your decision breaks through the established combat rules, and you swipe again to end the fight. By shattering the conventions here, Fox makes it clear that all aspects of the fight come back to your decision. Switching gears to look at the Chaos King's inclusion, after wearing down the enemy king to his knees, you and your team stand rightfully triumphant over the foe. However, Rousey's own decision to use his heal, breaking from the established flow of the earlier fight of you telling him what to do, gives the boss a bump that takes him to the upper hand once again. From there, right in line with the game's themes, you have no say in the following outcome. You can't stop yourself from being picked up, nor nearly killed. And not even in how the king is defeated, since that ultimately comes from characters outside of your discretion. Just as every aspect before this moment withheld you from taking your action, the finale bookends this with the same emotions of helplessness seen when you first encountered Susie Eaton Chalk. Evidently, the same scene where the game flat out states its theme. Your choices don't matter. Now, it'd be a disservice to both of these games to not mention that they each have other bosses that echo these themes in satisfying ways, such as with your decision to flee your fight with Undyne and Undertale, or with your lack of direct action in the K-Round fight in Deltarune, seen as your primary target is the foe's crown more so than him. And while these are examples of the themes worth discussing in their own right, I think in these two boss fights in particular, the game design points straight every single aspect toward facilitating that these are well-deserved conclusions. Culminating the player's earlier journey leading to the fight, these battles both showcase their specific theses within the field of their gameplay, and conclusively in the final blow delivered to both bosses. And by cohering to this strategy within every bit of his games, Toby Fox gives them a level of theme cohesion and conclusion perfect for a final boss. Hey there, spare this one up in the top right to see why we need to hate our Pokemon rivals, or defend down in the bottom right for another video. If you want to support the channel and get new boss battle breakdowns every week, then whack smack on that subscribe button. But until then, take care, and you have a good one, alright?